four o'clock. Uh, time to get drinking. Uh, if you guys haven't already started drinking already. Um, this is my first time ever doing this. I have no clue if anyone's even out there watching or if anyone's paying attention. So this could just be for myself and cathartic. But if it is, I'm going to make a, cute, uh, a couple of freaking drinks and drink them anyway because it's that time anyhow. So before we get started with this, uh, if you're going to raise your game and be a professional drinker like me, I think there's some tools you need. So I want to talk about two things before we get started today. One are kind of the tools that every bartender, barsmith, someone who's going to make drinks should have, okay? Um, first one is a jigger, okay? Jigger. This is uh, what they call a Japanese jigger. Two ounces on one side, one ounce on the other side. There's a million different kinds of jiggers. This is kind of a normal American jigger. You got uh, one and a half ounces and a one ounce pour. Uh, by the way, uh, shot is an ounce and a half. It is not an ounce. Um, this is actually a really cool one uh, that I found on Amazon. Uh, it's OXO. If you take a look inside, it's actually got all your measurements on there. Um, pretty cool. The one thing about it, it's hard to use when you're grabbing your hand. If you put it down on something, it's great to measure. Otherwise, it's you know, not so good. Um, second thing, if you're going to be uh, uh, start making drinks, you're going to need a muddler. Okay. Um, some people call these a pist. Don't know why. Um, there's the, you can find these, the wooden like ground ones. Um, you could use the, uh, you know, back end of a blunt knife, whatever, but a muddler, you're, you're probably going to want one of those. Um, you're probably going to at some point want a juice press. Um, it doesn't have to be a big one. This is just a really small one, cheapo plastic one. Works super well, especially when you're making drinks because you can squeeze a couple ounces of fresh lime or lemon juice without having to go through a lot of stuff. So super good. Uh, and then uh, this is a bar spoon. Uh, good for two different reasons. For deep drinks, if you're drinking a ton with a big drink. Um, also, uh, a lot of bar recipes will have like a spoon of this or spoon of that. They're talking about this kind of spoon, which is probably about two teaspoons, okay? But they're super helpful for stirring stuff. You don't need one, but you got it. You probably have one. Um, another thing, at some point, you're going to want a shaker, right? This is just your kind of normal shaker. Um, I like these that have the strainer on top, so I don't need to you know, go all crazy with my actual strainer. Um, I love this little guy. Uh, if you're like me and you like to make drinks for yourself, a little personal shaker. These things rock, by the way. Um, so those are kind of the tools that you need. Uh, there's a ton of substitutes you can use in there. Uh, you don't need a muddler. You can use a blunt end of a knife or something like that. You don't have to have a jigger. You can use a real shot glass. Uh, that's fine. You just need to get your measurements down. Um, at some point, you're going to get to a point where you just pour the booze in there and you kind of know how much it is. But until that point, measuring is really good. Um, a couple things that I think every bar should have. I think there's three types of liquors every bar should have. You should have some type of a bourbon or a rye. You should have some type of a gin. I would argue probably a gin and a dry gin, so maybe two different types of gin. And a, a good vodka, just a nice, decent, plain old vodka. I think every bar needs those three types of liquor. Um, so... Knock yourself out with those. Um, I think you need bitters, right? I go with the kind of middle of the road, common everyday bitters. Um, there's all kinds of flavored bitters for some drinks. Um, their profile lends themselves well to using different kinds of bitters. I've got some orange bitters here. I'll show you a variant of the old fashioned we'll make tonight, which uses those. Um, vermouth, um, syrups, that kind of stuff. You're going to find drinks that you like, uh, and you're going to want to get good ingredients for those drinks. So, you know, think about those. Uh, if people actually watch this, we'll do another drink next week. Maybe we'll do a Manhattan, or maybe we'll do um, like a, a really good, um, oh, martini or something like that. Um, some of these things make a difference in those drinks. Um, and proper glassware. Uh, for sure, you know, you need some good 
highball glasses. Uh, Molly hates me because I have like freaking seven sets of highball glasses. Uh, but I wouldn't need seven sets if she didn't keep breaking them all the time. So full disclosure, I did not break them. Um, so that's kind of what you need. Uh, the old fashioned is an interesting drink. It's a staple. Uh, if made well, they're super yummy. And there's a lot of variants for an old fashioned that you can use. That even if you don't like bourbon, I think I can find a version that you may like. Um, some just thoughts on, in general, old fashions. You see a lot of people take um, a cube of sugar and they'll take bitters and they'll pour it on that cube of sugar and they'll put that at the bottom of the highball glass uh, and then they'll pour their bourbon in there. Uh, I say that's crap. Um, it's old school, it's old fashioned. You don't get that uh, nice sweetness out of the sugar. It tends to stay at the bottom. So I would highly recommend using a, a simple syrup. Simple syrup, super easy to make. It's equal parts granulated sugar and water. That's it, just bring the water to a low boil, dump it in sugar, stir it up, it's done. You can go buy the stuff super cheap at any store for like six, seven bucks for a big thing. It's just sugar water, right? Um, when you start making these drinks, you're gonna find that um, you're gonna start making your own syrups. Um, there is one syrup that you can buy, like in particular, it's this stuff right here, it's called Barsmith, it's old fashioned syrup. Uh, I get it at Safeway, you can get it just about anywhere. It is amazingly good. Um, the one thing about the syrup I'm gonna be using tonight, I'm gonna be using a, a Demerara syrup, which I made myself. I'll tell you guys what's in that. But the nice thing about the old fashioned is depending on what kind of booze you use, if you use bourbon, typically bourbons are sweeter. If you use rye, rye is a little bit spicier. If you use like that bar, the Barsmith stuff, okay, you can see the color, it's a dark color. Uh, it's got some really all natural spices and stuff in it. Um, here's the stuff I'm gonna use it for my drink. This is called a Demerara syrup. This is just Demerara sugar. You can get it at any store. I get it at QFC. Um, I take a half a cup of that, boil some water, half a cup of water. That's all it is, but it's really good. I, I highly recommend this stuff over just a normal simple syrup and a drink like this because the spiciness of it will really bring out a rye uh, and it will also enhance the sweetness of a bourbon. So either way you go, you're good. So that's kind of my thoughts on Cuba sugar in this versus uh, syrup. Um, bourbons and ryes, uh, this is a, a religious battle, right? I like them both. Um, in order to, all, all bourbons, all ryes are all whiskeys. Not all whiskeys are bourbons, not all whiskeys are ryes, okay? Um, to be a bourbon, you have to have 51% corn mash. There's an actual recipe that, that you have to follow that's certified. That makes it a bourbon. Because of the corn, the sugar in the corn tends to be a little bit sweeter. Ryes uh, tend to have a lot more rye. They don't have to adhere to those strict standards with the corn mash. They tend to be spicier. Uh, and I don't mean like spicy spicy, but like um, kind of all spice or cinnamon spicy, something like that. Um, they tend to be really good. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I can kinda, I'm gonna try to do stuff in front of you here if I can. The very first thing we wanna do is we wanna take an orange and cut it up. We're gonna muddle this orange. So let me grab a highball glass here. Highball glass, uh, orange. I love these little cuties and the reason why I love them is they're perfect for drinks, dude. Especially if you're drinking by yourself. These are awesome because you're not wasting like a big old orange. You buy these in a bag for like six bucks, seven bucks. They're freaking awesome. So just take one of these. We're going to cut a wedge out of it. Okay, nothing special. Wedge. Um, what I like to do is I like to rim the glass. Okay, no dirty jokes. Um, shove that in there and we're going to use our muddler to muddle this thing. Okay, so just really... Kind of, I got it all in my hand. Just kind of muddle that in there. So it's all squished up. Okay, that's it. Um, if you're a drinker like me, you're gonna go for the big fatty cubes. These things are awesome. Um, the reason why I love big ice cubes uh, is because they don't melt as fast, to be quite honest. They'll keep your drink colder. They don't melt as fast as uh, regular cubes, but Half the time I just use something out of the freezer anyway, but I had these on hand, so I'm gonna use it. Um, the nice thing, so you can get these silicone molds on Amazon or any like Total Wine or whatever, super cheap, like four bucks for a, a tray of like eight of them. 
if you get them, make sure you get the silicone ones that are bendy because they're a pain in the ass to get out of there. So, model orange, big old fatty ice cube. Now comes the easy part. Let's start with the bourbon. Okay. And this is my house bourbon. Uh, this is, I believe, black powder. I need two ounces of this. Um, I'm starting to really like Buffalo Trace. It's kind of my house bourbon. It's an inexpensive bourbon. It's actually pretty tasty. It works really well in a lot of drinks. It's got a, a kind of a long tail um, and a nice kind of sweetness to it. So there's that. Uh, the next thing is the Demerara syrup. Okay, we had, remember, two ounces of bourbon. I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna use between a quarter and a half an ounce of the simple syrup, okay? Depending on kind of how sweet you want it. Um, I typically do about a third of an ounce, okay? Pour that in there, okay? So it kind of looks like ass right now. I'm gonna take some bitters, okay? A few shakes of bitters in there. I always have a towel handy. And then all we're gonna do is stir. That's it. Okay, now let's try this and see what I forgot. Oh shit, I didn't forget anything. This thing's freaking awesome. Now, mm, that's good stuff. So let's talk about a couple of the variants. So this is what I would consider a pretty modern um, old fashioned. Old fashioned gets its name uh, in lore anyway, post prohibition, where they made these whiskey drinks um, and they made them a little bit sweeter because the whiskey sucked. Uh, and so, post prohibition, where all these drinks were made available and people were experimenting, people would say, hey, look, I want my whiskey the old fashioned way. That's legend on where it comes up. Um, so that's, this is a modern twist, right? Um, most times I'll kind of go Don Draper on it. This is just a deal of maraschino cherries. This is a cheap old Safeway one with maraschino cherries. You can go one of two ways. You can go cheap, really sugary. Okay. I'm just going to take one of those and a bar spoon full of the sugar juice and shove that in there and mix that bad boy up. That's one way to go. The other way is get some really good maraschino cherries, um, like those nice, like almost black ones with the really thick syrup. That stuff rocks. So this is kind of the Don Draper variant. Um, sometimes I'll muddle the cherry. Um, sometimes I won't. Shit, that's good. That's really good. I got it. I'm not lying. So um, that's all there is to an old fashioned. Super easy, right? Two ounces or two parts of your favorite bourbon or rye. A half, a quarter to a half a part of simple syrup. I use this Demerara syrup, super, super easy to make. Um, equal parts of Demerara sugar. You can get it at any grocery store and water, bring it to a boil, shove it in there. This bar smith stuff is super good. Um, super easy, and you can just buy this for like five bucks a bottle. A um, few shakes of bitters. Uh, what else did I miss? Orange muddled, Don Draper style, add the cherry. Super good. Now, a lot of people don't like bourbon or rye or whiskey and that stuff, although this is freaking amazing. Just one second. Mm. Okay, that was really good. So, I'm going to do a variant on this with tequila. I'm going to make a tequila old-fashioned. And I do not like tequila. Let me just say, I can't stand it. Molly loves tequila. She really, that's her thing. Not mine. But this drink will please both crowds. Um, I recommend you use either a Respato tequila, right? Or an agave tequila. The agave tequila is a little bit sweeter. Uh, the Respato is just a little bit sugary, more than the silver ones. This doesn't really work very well with the silver ones. Um, but we're gonna do the same thing. Uh, and if you like tequila, by the way, um, and you have a Respato, like a gold tequila, just uh, a slice of orange muddled on the bottom with the tequila actually is pretty darn good by itself. So we're going to repeat the steps. Orange. This time I'm going to muddle a cherry in there. 
Okay, so kind of mushing that up right there. This time instead of bourbon, um, we'll use tequila. Um, a lot of, I, I use decanters for my liquor um, for a couple reasons. Um, kind of like wine in some cases, the air can help it breathe a little bit, um, but you're really probably never gonna notice it. For me, it's easier to get, right? I can just pop the top off instead of work, worrying about a stupid um, stopper or something like that. So two ounces of Respada tequila. And this, I believe, this is just Cuervo Gold, right? So it doesn't have to be anything special. Um, I'm not sure I've ever made this with Demerara simple syrup. So we'll give it a shot, see how it goes. Okay, there's a simple syrup. I'm gonna put that in there. Uh, in this, I am gonna use orange bitters. Oh, so by the way, the Don Draper um, version of the old fashioned, if you mix regular bitters and orange bitters, it actually turns out pretty good too. It's not bad. Okay, big old fatty ice cube. Let's see, I got tequila, I got my bitters, I got my simple syrup, I got my muddled juice, my muddled fruit in there. Okay, we're just gonna mix that bad boy up. This is the other cool thing about these bar spoons. Make things super easy to mix. Okay. Mmm, tasty. Smells like tequila. I do not like tequila, but this drink. Oh, freaking A, Ray. That's money. So, hope you guys learned something today. Hope you got some value out of this. Um, if you guys like this, maybe next Friday I'll do another one. We'll pick another drink. Um, maybe I'll put a couple of variants up there for you guys to decide. We can figure out what we want to make. Uh, I made a, a suffering bastard the other day, which I hadn't made for a long time. Suffering bastards are great for hangovers. Um, there's a really good drink, um, that I call the Kevin, uh, which I recently learned how to make from a bartender who couldn't think of a better name. So he just called it Kevin. Uh, I'm thinking about, uh, via Jeff Christopher calling it the Hagee because I make it with love and it turns out really well when I make it, but it's super involved. So we may start with something a little bit easier next week. Maybe like I said, a, a martini or a Manhattan, something more classic and then kind of work our way into, you know, some more crazy stuff. The way I look at this, we're probably going to be shut in for at least another month. So we've got three or four more drinks to make. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you get your drink on. Um, I hope some of you followed along with me and you're getting your drink on too. So this is, oh, another thing about drinks that I make, every drink I make has at least two shots of booze in it, every single one, okay? So you have to know yourself well enough to be able to, to make these drinks. The parts, when I say ounces, just think of it as a part. So two parts of booze to a quarter to a half a part of syrup. Uh, to some dashes of simple syrup, okay? So if you're going to go with, you know, one ounce of booze, just back everything off, okay? So super easy to make, old fashions, probably the one of the best drinks, one of probably my favorite drink of all time. Um, we made it with bourbon. We made it with tequila. Um, I like them both ways. Of course, I prefer the bourbon way over the, the tequila version, but if you're a tequila lover, this shit's good. Like, you will like this, I guarantee it. So... Um, hope you guys had some fun. Hope some of you followed along. If you guys want to do this again next week, let me know. We'll make another drink. It'll be fun. So <laughs> I hope this worked. Cheers, everybody. And be safe. Social distancing, six feet, all that stuff. Um, but alcohol is supposed to help the spread of this disease. So there you go. Uh, at least I think it does. Have a good weekend, guys.